Mr. McCoy here with today's edition of Literacy Corner. It features using details to support inferences and revolves around two articles, Treasures of the Tomb and Teeny Tiny Tardigrades. Here they come now. Up first, we are going to excavate treasures of the tomb, and as we do, listen for details that support the inference that one of the customs of the ancient Egyptians was to preserve bodies after death. Here comes treasures of the tomb, discovering King Tut's incredible riches. It's pitch black. His hands trembling, British archaeologist Howard Carter makes a small hole in the tomb's second door. He inserts a candle. Next to him, Lord Carnivon blurts out, Can you see anything? After a moment of stunned silence, Carter replies, Yes, wonderful things. What Carter sees looks like the inside of a giant treasure chest. Gold gleams everywhere. There are glittering statues, a throne, and fabulous golden beds with posts shaped like the heads of wild animals. Precious items are heaped all over the room. A mound of chariot parts fills one corner. It has taken five years of digging in Egypt's Valley of the Kings, a graveyard for ancient Egypt's richest kings, and $500,000 in today's money of British millionaire Lord Cornovon's cash. But Carter has hit the jackpot. He has discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun, often called Tut for short. Tut had become Pharaoh at age 9 and died just 10 years later around 1323 BC. Carter, Lord Carnarvon, and two others enter the cluttered first room, which they call the antechamber. Under a bed with posts in the shape of hippopotamus heads, Lord Carnarvon finds the entrance to another room. Soon known as the Annex, this tiny chamber holds more than 2,000 everyday objects. They include boomerangs, shields, a box containing eye makeup, and 116 baskets of food. Some of the piles reach nearly six feet high. When Carter clears the Annex out later, his workers are suspended by ropes at first to keep from stepping on things. The disorder in the annex indicates ancient grave robbers had looted the tomb. They left behind footprints and a bundle of Tut's gold finger rings hurriedly wrapped in cloth. Luckily, they'd been caught and the tomb resealed. That was more than 3,000 years ago. The explorers are fascinated by two tall statues in the antechamber showing Tut dressed in gold. The figures seem to be guarding yet another room. Sweltering in the heat, the group crawls through a hole created by the ancient robbers. Before them stands a huge wooden box or shrine that glitters with a layer of gold. This room must be Tut's burial chamber. At the very center of the shrine is a carved sarcophagus or stone coffin. Inside it are three nested coffins, each one more richly decorated than the one before. Inside the last coffin, made of solid gold, lies the mummy of Tutankhamun. A 22-pound gold mask covers its head and shoulders. A collar made from 171 separate gold pieces rests on the mummy's chest. It wears gold sandals on its feet. On one side of the burial chamber is an open doorway. It reveals the fourth room of the tomb. This one's so full of riches that Carter dubs it the treasury. 
towering over the other objects is a gold-covered shrine protected by statues of goddesses. The shrine holds Tut's liver, lungs, stomach, and intestines. Each vital organ is preserved, wrapped in linen, and placed in its very own small coffin. Today, about two and five tenths million people visit Egypt's Cairo Museum each year to see Tut's treasures on display. The ancient Egyptians believed that to speak the name of the dead is to make them live again. If that is true, Tutankhamun certainly lives on. Which brings us to the next section called The Curse of the Mummy. On April 5, 1923, Lord Cornovan died suddenly in Egypt. At that same moment, lights went out all over Cairo. In England, Lord Cornovan's dog, Susie, howled and died. Newspapers claimed that these events were caused by King Tut's curse. According to the newspapers, Tut's burial chamber contained a warning. Death shall come on swift wings to him that toucheth the tomb of the Pharaoh. It was a chilling story. Actually, there was no warning in Tut's tomb. The papers made up that part. Skeptics say the events have other explanations. Lord Carnivan had been in poor health for years. Cairo's feeble electric system caused lights to wink out all the time, and dogs sometimes do die unexpectedly. Only six of the 26 people who saw the opening of Tut's burial chamber died within the next 10 years. Howard Carter, who should have been the most cursed of all, lived until 1939, 17 years after coming face to face with Tutankhamun's mummy. So, the inference is that the ancient Egyptians wanted to preserve bodies after death. What details in this article support that inference? Share with your fellow listener. Up next, teeny tiny tardigrades. Again, as you immerse yourself in this article, be prepared to use details to make inferences about what teeny tiny tardigrades are. What would you say if someone asked you to name Earth's toughest survivor? Camels can go a week without drinking. A cockroach can survive more radiation than a person. But there is a teeny tiny creature that can go without food or water for years. It is so small that it can only be seen under a microscope. Its real name is tardigrade. Most people call it a water bear surviving everything. Water bears look like soft, squishy bugs. People call them bears because they walk the way bears do. Most water bears are smaller than the period at the end of this sentence. Don't let their size fool you. They are found in places that would kill most living things. Some water bears survive in the boiling water found in hot springs. Others live miles below the ocean's surface they survive with tons of water pressing down on them. Not all water bears live in extreme places. They can be found in parks, forests, and gardens. They thrive in damp, woody areas where mosses and other plant life grow. Many feed by sucking juices out of plants. Others eat creatures that are smaller than the eye. Drying up is the next section. Water bears must have water to stay active. It helps them eat, move, and breathe. So what happens when the water around one of these tiny creatures dries up? First, it pulls in its eight legs, then it curls its body into a barrel shape called a ton, T-U-N. It loses 99% of its water, then every single life function of the water bear stops. When conditions get better, the water bear stretches its little legs and starts moving and eating again. Water bears can survive the extreme cold and radiation of outer space. Scientists sent some water bears into space as part of an unmanned mission. They came back fine. Not so long ago, most scientists believed life did not exist beyond Earth. Now, many think it is possible. If water bears can survive a visit to outer space, 
who knows what other creatures might live there. So what inferences can you make about what a tardigrade is? Share with your fellow listener. This marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Another is coming soon. It too will be equally incredible.